Hey, Pokemon Masters! My name is Bergy Batobi, and hey, thank you for clicking on my video. Be the best you can be and find your destiny! The Battle Frontier was such a good series of the uh, Pokemon animated series. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed the Battle Frontier in general. I mean, who doesn't kind of look at Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and go, Where's the Battle Frontier? What is that statue of the Battle Tower doing there? Why, where is our Battle Frontier? These battle facilities that have stretched all the way from Generation 2 right the way up to Mon Day, these facilities provide us with a challenge beyond the main story of the game, beyond the gym challenge and the champion, and they allow us to prove ourselves as true Pokemon Masters. And there's been a lot of them, and there's been a lot of different battle facilities that I kind of want to talk about in this video and do a, a, a kind of very casual tier list. And the reason for me choosing this topic for today's video, I think, I think one, it's just a really interesting topic, and these battle facilities, some of them provide that challenge, and some of them maybe don't. And two, a new battle facility is appearing, thanks to today's sponsor, DNA and Pokemon Masters, with the all-new Battle Villa. For those of you who don't know, Pokemon Masters is a free-to-download uh, Pokemon game for the for mobile. Downloadable through the Google Store, iOS Store. Use the link at the top of the description. It'll take you to whatever your phone has. And you take on these kind of three-on-three -three battles with sync pair partners. So that's a Pokemon Master and their kind of favorite Pokemon. And the Battle Villa is aimed at the more competitive Pokemon players. Those of you looking for that next level of challenge. You take him with you instead of the usual three, nine sync pair partners. However, as you ascend through the floors of the Battle Villa, any HP you lose on the floor below gets carried with you. So this is ultimately you versus the most formidable of Pokemon Master AIs taking on the biggest challenge yet. And to maybe give you that little, little edge in the game right now to help you out with that challenge is Syngasuit Red with Charizard and Syngasuit Elisa with Rotom. These characters are available in the game now along with the Battle Villa challenge. So I absolutely recommend you try it out, take it on, see how challenging you find it using the link at the top of the description. And thank you to DNA and Pokemon Masters for sponsoring this video. And with the Battle Villa kind of not being on this tier list because I haven't really had a chat, it's still very new. Still getting to grips with the Battle Villa and seeing what I think of it. Uh, let's do a tier list of all of the others all throughout the the main console series of games what are these battle facilities i think there's more than you think i'm going to start off with just some honorable mentions because they don't really quite make the list but there are four battle facilities in the games extra challenges that i think are particularly cool number one is mount battle from pokemon coliseum this is a 100 floor challenge where you take on 100 trainers in a row getting to the very top of the volcano to battle trainers who use uh, in xd gale of darkness they use legendary pokemon and it's all double battles, as is the style of Colosseum and Gale of Darkness. In Pokemon Colosseum, you actually get Ho-Oh if you finish this challenge and you've completed everything else in the game, so it really is the final challenge. In Gale of Darkness, you get a Johto starter, which is pretty cool. They're pretty rare in Gen 3. The only other games you can get the Johto starters in at that point were Pokemon Colosseum, as well as Pokemon Emerald if you've completed the Pokedex. So the Johto star starters were pretty rare in that era. As well as that, I'm going to do an honorable mention shout out to Unova's uh, White Tree Hollow, Black Tower and Pokemon World Tournament. These aren't really like battle facilities in the same way the other battle facilities are, but they definitely provide some very cool and interesting challenges with some decent prizes. With the White Tree Hollow and Black Tower, you can get some shiny Pokemon given to you, a Gibble and a Dratini. And with the Pokemon World Tournament, it's kind of like Pokemon Masters just in one tournament in Unova, with every gym leader and every champion coming together to face off in one big battle. So I think that's pretty cool and worth mentioning. And so now starting off with, and again, this is a super subjective list. This is just my opinion. I have not had the chance to battle and play all of these challenges, but I've played a number of them. I've actually done a lot of research on them. And I want to say a massive thank you to Mystic Umbreon, who recently did a similar kind of video ranking worst to best uh, of just the battle frontiers, which also helped kind of give me the idea for this video where I was like, yeah, but there's more battle facilities out there. And also I think we have some different opinions, but I'll leave that link below as well. So you can check that out when you're done with this one. And I'm going to start off with D tier. These are battle facilities that I don't even really consider true battle facilities. These are the Aloha Region's Battle Agency, the Bo Battle Royale Dome, the Battle Tents from Pokemon Emerald, and the Battle Institute, which is in both Kalos and in Unova. All of these battle facilities aren't really facilities. They're called kind of like small, smaller battle facilities, with none of them really having a figurehead. I mean, the, the Royale Dome does kind of have the Mask Royale as a kind of figurehead of it, but it's Pokemon aren't really what I would call massively impressive, and all of the regions that feature these kind of small battle facilities all have a much larger battle facility, which is kind of the true one. But these just felt worth mentioning, so they're kind of the D tier. In the C list, and I hate that I'm putting this in C, is the OG, the original, 
Pokemon Battle Tower from Pokemon Crystal. This was the first one, and look, I spent about 20 minutes the other day just watching footage of the Battle Tower battles for as research for this video. And there's 10 floors and you ascend each one, each one representing a different kind of set of 10 levels. So the final floor is all level 100 Pokemon. And they use some really challenging Pokemon against you. You know, there's Blissey, there's Tyranitar, there's all of the Pokemon that you would expect from top tier Johto. And I have such nostalgia for Pokemon Crystal that I really wanted to put this higher up on the list. But reasonably, you know, this gauntlet of 100 battles, doing them one after the other with only a few chances to kind of take a breath and reorganize what team you want to have. These challenges, this is as a challenge is hard and ultimately acts as the basis for basically every other battle facility. However, that's all there is to it. There's no figurehead of this battle tower like later battle towers, which I personally think is a big reason to like those facilities. And I mean, yeah, they were still learning. You're still at a point where you're doing one-on-one -on -one battles. There's, there's not too much strategy around it. And there definitely are ways that you can outsmart the computer players. I mean, I was watching a very intense strategy where someone was basically just using sword stance and then baton passing into one of two other Pokemon that were able to sweep every team. Also in C tier is the battle tree from Alola. While there are a lot of familiar faces, like for example, an older Red, and there's Annabelle from the Battle Tower, who we'll talk about a little bit later on, and a bunch of the other trainers from the other region show up, ultimately I kind of see the Battle Tree as a poor man's Battle Tower. There's just not that much a kind of personality about the Battle Tree, and again, there's no major figurehead, there's no one using some incredibly strong Pokemon. I think the strongest trainer in there is probably Annabelle, and uh, she just kind of rocks a different facility, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. There's also the Battle Subway in Unova, and don't get me wrong, Ingo and Emmett are very cool characters with very cool designs, and the whole idea of moving through a train and through every single carriage to go to the next battle is, you know, essentially the same as the Battle Tower, but sounds a lot more fun. But Ingo and Emmett don't use any Pokemon outside of just generically strong Unova Pokemon. There's no legendaries, there's nothing like that, and so for me it kind of makes C, C tier, maybe it should be the tier above, but that's it for me. And also in C tier is the Trainer Tower from Fire Red and Leaf Green, which was kind of like an early comeback for the Battle Tower, but again, there's no like super powerful Pokemon in here. You're really just dealing with the best that Kanto has to offer, which is like Charizard. That's on the top floor at the top level. So moving on to B tier, we have a few facilities here that are particularly interesting. I'm going to start with the Battle Palace, which is one that is so gimmicky, but I don't, I don't love it. It's just not for me personally. And that is where you register your Pokemon to battle, they start doing battle, and then there you don't put in any controller inputs. The Pokemon battle for themselves, and depending on their nature, they'll then use certain moves. So for example, an adamant Pokemon is more likely to use attacking moves as opposed to like status moves, which in theory on paper sounds really cool. And if you like that kind of strategizing, then I guess, but for me, I want to have control over each and every battle. So I personally just don't like that. I do like the frontier brain of this facility, uh, Spencer, who has a wicked cool design. I mean, is that stuff like, is that related to Kyogre or like what's going on there? And Spencer can use some wicked legendary Pokemon. So I'll give him that, but for me, the Battle Palace is, is not my favorite facility. And now for a quick audio interjection. I forgot about the Battle Arena with the Arena Tycoon Greta. Uh, honestly, not my favorite facility. I gotta admit the challenge itself is pretty interesting. With Pokemon fighting for three rounds and if no one's knocked out, the judges decide who won. And that means a lot of trainers, including Greta in the Battle Arena, use stall tactics, which is ultimately very, very interesting. It's a really cool gimmick, but it doesn't leave much to be feared from Greta. I don't know. I mean, Greta was so forgettable that I forgot to mention her in the actual filming of this video. So uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Battle Arena. Didn't forget it now. There is also the Battle Factory, which is just like the Battle Tower. There's two of these actually. There's one in Sinnoh and there's one in Hoenn. And I think the one in Hoenn maybe even deserves to be on the tier list above this because of a Frontier Brain. Uh, but essentially these facilities are just like Battle Towers, except again, you use rental Pokemon rather than your own. And for me, while that's a fun little gimmick and experiment, I wouldn't want to call that the best challenge ever. I think the best challenge ever is you using your own Pokemon. So that's just my personal opinion. However, what I will say when you compare the factory heads, Noland and Thornton, Noland is very, very cool. For one, he's got a wicked appearance in the animated series where he uses an Articuno, and for two, even in the games, he uses legendary Pokemon. Also very similar to the Battle Tower are the Battle Arcade and Battle Castle, except each of these has its own individual gimmick that allows you to kind of improve your run through. So in the Battle Castle, you get castle points, which you can spend on specific buffs for your team, which is obviously very, very cool. 
cool and the valet at the end of it. The battle facility leader, Darok, he's really, really cool and ties in with the story of Caitlyn of the Unovan Elite Four, which is pretty cool. But you know, his team is, I think, pretty standard. And then when you look at the battle arcade, you have Dahlia as the figurehead who does use a Zapdos, which is very awesome. But compared to some of the brains like Nolan, who use a whole roster of legendary Pokemon, I'm like, eh. Who is this trainer? I don't care that much. Plus, the Battle Arcade has this series of randomization where sometimes you'll get buffs for your teams and other times you'll get nerfs for your teams. And that kind of randomness takes away from the strategizing for me. I don't personally love that as the challenge. So ultimately, I just see these as battle towers where you can either get extra help or get like nerfed for no reason. And so ultimately, I think they're kind of worse than battle towers. Speaking of battle towers, there is also Gala's battle tower, which is the, uh, personally, it is my favorite design of a battle tower. I think it's really, really cool. And I think Leon being the head of it at the master rank is very, very awesome. But Leon's Pokemon, other than his Gigantamax Charizard, which, you know, we all saw that coming, doesn't provide any kind of super cool, legendary battle, mythical status thing. When you compare it to other battle towers, I think B tier is a pretty good place for it. And finally in B tier is the Battle Dome, which is a much short, shorter facility. You only have to do a few battles because you're in a, a, a kind of tournament style thing, just like the Pokemon World Tournament. And at the end, you do battle Tucker. The Dome Ace, who has an amazing design and a Latios and a Metagross, which in Generation 3 is quite the combo. However, that said, this facility is quite short, probably the easiest to complete and so maybe the least challenging so we'll keep it in b tier now let's move on to a tier with the incredibly well designed battle pike and its leader lucy this is a facility that you can investigate there's wild pokemon in there and lucy as a challenge uses some really phenomenal pokemon and while no granted no legendaries does have this kind of running theme of snake pokemon which is kind of nice it is the battle pike after all aesthetically this whole place is nice and for that alone I want to rank it high. However, I can't rank her any higher, and yes, there is higher than A tier, um, because again, her team isn't super imposing. That said, I would love to learn more about Lucy as a character, and I would love to see some of these characters reappear in future games. Argenta of the Battle Hall being one of them, a battle facility from the Sinnoh and I guess uh, Hot Gold or Silver games. A character who has access to a ton, an absolute ton of legendary Pokemon. And the whole thing with the battle hall is that you're allowed to take on Pokemon. You choose a type and you use one Pokemon to battle your opponents using that type of Pokemon. And you can choose if you wish to go up against stuff that you have type advantage to. However, those Pokemon will get harder and harder if you keep on choosing that type. So there's actually a really fun level of strategizing here. Do you take on battles where you have type advantage or do you take on battles where uh, you're, you're gonna go against level lower level Pokemon? Ultimately, I think the battle hall is a very cool facility and I think Argenta, if that's how you pronounce her name, is a really cool leader. However, in S tier, the best ultimate challenges that you can ever face in a Pokemon game, in my opinion, we have the two battle towers from Hoenn and Sinnoh. Here, your frontier brains are the tower tycoons, Palma and, and Annabelle, who both use phenomenal Pokemon. Palma is the dad of your rival from the Sinnoh games. So there's this kind of intense personal element to it. And for me, while I know some people might find the battle towers to be like boring, for example, because it is just battle, and moving up rooms or staying in the same room and having characters come to you, that's kind of the challenge of it. It's gonna require all of your brain power and resilience to sit through these hundred battles with them getting more and more challenging, not wanting to lose or else you'll be sent back further down the tower. I think all of that combined with two frontier brains that are just absolutely phenomenal to battle. With Annabelle having a really cool episode in the animated series and this spotlight in the Alola region now. And Palma with this relationship to your rival being his dad, I think is all very, very cool. However, the gold standard gets even more golden with the Battle Pyramid. The Battle Pyramid captures the imagination and it's not the tip of deep top, I've still got one more after this, but the Battle Pyramid is so cool in the way it's designed, in the fact that you have to explore it and that ultimately once you've got through all of these really tough battles, you're met with the Pyramid King. Brandon, he really is a king, using the legendary Reggie Pokemon and the legendary birds. And again, I know it doesn't add to the challenge, but it does add something to the personality of the place, I think. When you look to the animated series, and you see how many times Ash lost against Pyramid King Brandon, you go into this thinking, oh, this guy, this guy is going to be a challenge. And it really, really is. And aesthetically, just like the Battle Pike, I think it does a lot. A lot of these battle facilities are just 
buildings, which I think is really interesting. I think a good design can take these things a long way. So that's a big reason why I've put it on S tier. But truly, the tippity top, and not so much in terms of design, and more so just in terms of their leaders, I'm gonna talk about the Battle Mason. That's right, the Kalosian Battle Facility. The Battle Mason with its four leaders. With Nita, Dana, Evelyn, and Morgan, these four battle, um, word I can't pronounce, uh, facility heads. These four ladies only exclusively use legendary Pokemon, and a massive roster of them at that. These ladies are terrifying, and I kind of wanna know, like, where did they come from? in the world of Pokemon. I mean, they are red, blue, green, and yellow. Are they some past Kanto adventurers and this is just what happens when you become the champion and you keep on going, you keep on winning with all of your rivals, you just end up opening up a battle facility where you're like the strongest trainers ever. And this facility is cool. It's just like any battle tower where you do battle after battle after battle. And granted, it's not explorable and I think the design is a bit, okay, yeah, bog standard compared to a giant snake or a pyramid. Though with that being said, you can take it on in single, double, triple rotation and multi-battles you can take on in, in a number of different ways and the challenge is there for you. And yes, there will always be gimmicks to win any of these facilities. I remember particularly, I found this strategy where you could use a level one Aron that held uh, Berry Juice and had Sturdy and had Protect and the AIs would go, oh, we've got to beat the level one Aron because we can wipe that out in one hit. And then you'd use Greninja's Map Block to protect it for a turn and it would essentially give you two to three turns of just attacking their Pokemon with your two side Pokemon in triple battles while they're all just trying to kill this Aron and it keeps on getting protected and blocked. But anyway, that aside, yes, there will always be strategies to defeat these uh, battle facilities, but they all provide a really good challenge. And I think the characters that are within them and this really cool level of story, and I'd love to explore these characters some more. So this is just my personal list, but maybe you completely disagree with the order. I want you to, you know, get down there in the comments. Let me know, did I miss something? Am I just being really stupid about a battle facility? And of course, when you're done here, go check out the Battle Villa in Pokemon Masters, link at the top of the description using the, the Google Play or Apple Store. Thank you to DNA and Pokemon Masters for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master! And a massive thank you to those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of the month, the Nerd Therapist and Gunner Clovis. Thank you.